What's cracking, guys? Omar Esop here, back with another video. Back today with a very special guest. Jeff, what's going on, my man? This is it, man. This is the one right here. This I feel it. the power. <laughs> my arm's actually growing right now because yeah, of you right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'd lose that straight. I, someone wanted to do a uh, arm wrestle with me. I'm like, no, there's no chance. I'm going to lose. Like, yeah. you want me to just say I lose? I lose. But uh, Jeff, you're here, man. You came to Toronto. You've been to uh, Toronto a bunch of times. It's good to finally meet. I noticed about you, you got an extremely aesthetic physique besides putting out excellent information on your YouTube channel. You are a pro bodybuilder, right? That's right. Um, I, I don't know if you could tell, but I showed Eric Helms my physique and he said, uh, yeah, I want to bring up your arms. Yeah. I noticed you got some arms. So uh, today, <laughs> I think it'd be cool if you just uh, walk me through an arm workout and explain your training methodology, how you approach it. Because I like how you take an evidence-based approach. You're very methodical when it comes to your training and there's always a reason. There, there's experience, but then there's also a reason behind it. Yeah, for sure. I, I I think Helms is a little rough on you, bro. Like, I, th actually, I actually think that your arms are not that bad. All right, like, you know, five out of 10. I, and especially like, you have good shoulder development, good trap development, good pec development. It's like that gives you that like kind of presence up here that I feel like arms are, I actually see them more as like an accessory. Yeah. But arms were actually like, in my competition experience, always kind of a weak point for me as well. Really? Um, it just basically comes down to insertions. Like if you don't have that, mountainous bicep peak they can look a little bit smaller on stage but for all that i still feel like there are other body parts that are more i feel like arms get so much of the limelight yeah um, but i'm more of like a shoulder lat quad sweep type guy that's what gives you that like x frame um but with that said i still think there's always room to improve sure um but yeah man so uh for the workout, generally speaking for arms, I usually like to kick it off with a bench press, actually. Um, typically it'll be a close grip bench press, but where we're both doing more of like a powerlifting style approach, we'll just go with the regular uh, wide grip and we're gonna do three sets of five reps and mm -hmm. we'll kind of just like, kind of pyramid our way up to sort of like a top heavy working set. So for me, I'm looking to get somewhere in the range of like 275 to 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm just leaving a couple reps in the tank on each set. Yeah, and uh, that's what uh, some people might not know, especially uh, on my channel. It's like, dude, you're legitimately very strong. Like, you used to do powerlifting too. And you told me you had an over two times body weight uh, bench press and you had the record for a hot minute uh, in yeah, Canada. Yeah, literally about yeah. a minute, yeah. No, but you had the record. <laughs> yeah, once, yeah, yeah. once you have the record, you have the record. <laughs> it was official, it. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, at my peak, I had bench press uh, for a pause, 363. Yep. So that was at 162 pounds body yep. weight. And that's my, Dude, that's my all time PR. No, that's huge. I, I, and I uh, said uh, not to uh, go off on a tangent, but you said you might want to go back a little bit into strength training. Cause I think you have yeah. massive potential when it comes to strength. For sure, man. Like I love it. I love the technical aspect of it. There's a good developing science base, I think in powerlifting in general. Yeah. Um, and it's just so methodical. Like I really like that aspect of it. And they're probably my top three movements like i actually find arm training on the more boring side even though the, the pump is fun yeah i'd much prefer to do like a good bench squat and deadlift session so that's probably part of the reason why i like to kick off arm workouts with the bench press okay yeah, yeah. and then you said uh jeff uh so why even would you advocate potentially for someone to do an arm day rather than just you know splitting this up into you know you do your pull workout you do some biceps why do you kind of advocate yeah. maybe an arm day yeah, so I do get pushback from this, just from the outset, like a lot of the science-based, you know, practitioners don't necessarily advise that because I feel like it kind of trespasses into that sort of wasted set territory. It's like you can only do so much volume and then you're kind of wasting your time. For me, I don't really look at it like that. I kind of put the principle of specificity and prioritization first. Mm -hmm. So if arms are a weak point for me, and I think they are, I like to treat them as something that I need to prioritize in my training. And as I see it, there are two ways you can kind of do that. Um, one is by doing them earlier in the workout when you're stronger. The downside of doing that is then your subsequent back work is probably gonna take a hit. You yeah. might be as strong, you might fatigue a little bit early. Um, the other option is to give it your own day or to give it its own day so you're completely fresh going in. Um, and I found that really has made all the difference. So what I do is I put you know, three sets for biceps, three sets for triceps on one day. And I kind of treat that as if it were sort of like an optional rest day in right. a sense. So it, it, you know, people make a big deal out of this, but I feel like the recovery cost of an arm day is actually really low. Yeah, when people right? talk about like, like total fatigue or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. We'll be able to train upper body tomorrow and be fine. And if you are a little bit sore, you know, just get a little bit of a sweat on and you won't notice it the same, yeah. right? Um, so I like to give it its own day, really give it that priority. 
And then the other benefit is that you're, you're just so much fresher. So if you were to say tack your arm work on at the end of a pull day or a push day, um, you, you will almost inevitably be weaker, which yeah. means less tension, less potential for growth. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, that's kind of one of the more bro philosophies I embrace is the, is the arm day. No, but I, I think you nailed it when you said that because for me personally, how I organize my training, I'll do a pull workout and then back takes priority and then I always go on to biceps, but mm -hmm. I'm fatigued at that point. So I, I personally could totally see your argument mm -hmm. towards dedicating an arm day. So for you, you start then with a heavier bench. What's then, what comes after that? So after that, I like to put my biceps work first, mostly just because it's what I've gotten the feedback on the most from the judges. That's something I need to bring up. Yep. Um, so more or less like any body part, I like to start with some kind of heavy movement when you're the strongest. So obviously don't do your high rep metabolic <laughs> burnout stuff first. Um, so I'll start with a, a heavy easy bar uh, bicep curl. And by heavy, I mean like six to eight reps, leaving a couple reps in the tank usually. Um, sometimes I'll go as low as four to six, but I do find that I can crank out four reps with some really heavy <laughs> weight if I get a bit of momentum. Yeah. And it's very tempting to do that just for the sake of overload. I find I can be a little bit more conservative and say like realistic in the six to eight rep range with the loads I'm using. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically the, the first thing is just, you know, tension out of the gate. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, how do you select your exercises? What comes after that? Like, what are we talking for an arm day? So I, assuming I have the time, mm -hmm. I like to put all of my bicep stuff first. Like mm -hmm. I said, just to get that priority, except for the bench press. Yeah. Bench press comes first because that's like the main heavy compound lift. And I do have a power lifting focus right now. Yep. Um, then it comes the easy bar curl. Then I like to do some kind of uh, metabolic or stretch work. So I kind of like to combine those. Um, it does depend on the day. Uh, but also you want to think about the biomechanics of the shoulder. Uh, so with the easy bar curl, you kind of have the, the elbows a little bit more out in, in front. You have the shoulder in a more extended position. I actually like to hyper extend the shoulder for the second one. And Theoretically, I think that this should uh, stress the, the outer, the long head a little bit more. So even though you can't alter your muscle insertions and how, you know, you could make the argument you could change the shape of it a little bit by prior prioritizing different heads. Um, I do think that you can kind of hit that outer head a little bit more um, with the incline curl. So that's right. what I tend to do next. Um, and then what I think I want to try today mm -hmm. is um, a technique that I've been doing a little bit which is pausing at the most difficult part of the movement. So when you're at 90 degrees and torque is the highest, yep. you'll do a one second pause, come all, all the way up, squeeze, and do a one second pause at 90 degrees on the negative. And you'll do that for you know, 12 to 15 reps, leaving like maybe one or two reps in the tank. Yeah. And then you're gonna do an isometric hold here at 90 degrees for 15 yeah. seconds. And it's like, it sounds crazy, but the pump is just yeah. absolutely insane. Um, and even though I wouldn't say, the pump is like necessarily a driver of hypertrophy. I do think that effort is important. Absolutely. And so it, also enjoyment is important. So this is like a way to keep your training interesting, enjoyable, get a good pump, and then also provide the body with kind of a new stimulus in a way, if, especially if you're not used to doing it. Um, so that's the, that's the shock factor. I, and I would say uh, something I would want to emphasize too from training with you, a great ta uh, takeaway is there's training with bros. Uh, and they train at certain intensities. Like you're a bodybuilder, Jeff, and I'd say like the intensity of this arm workout. People might think, oh, look, it's just an arm workout. It's like you brought the intensity, right? Mm -hmm, of course. Uh, for, of and course. that I can't uh, stress that enough. Yeah. The need yeah. for intensity. Yeah. Actually, even while doing arms, like when doing those uh, metabolic sets and so forth. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that I feel like can sometimes take a back seat in people who do let's call it like some kind of evidence-based approach. Is that they have all of these variables and kind of like 
uh, peripheral factors really highly optimized, but yet effort isn't uh, like the, the most simplest thing. The isn't most important, quite there, right? And I would actually rank that very highly in the order of importance. Hold it. That's part of the reason why you'll see, like, I do, when, I, when I'm taking a set, like, I'm leaving a couple reps in the tank, the effort is still there. It's very intentional, very focused. Yeah. And then when it is time to apply that effort, which isn't always, it's not always all out, but when it is that time, you know, I do deliver. Yeah. yeah. Was that, wait, bro, you shouldn't go to failure always? Is that what you're yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so round us out then, Jeff, yeah. uh, the remaining parts of the workout. Yeah, okay, so after that, uh, we're gonna do one more uh, exercise in the stretch position. So this is the Bayesian curl, yep. uh, which I think is really cool because if you think about all the other movements that really you can do for the biceps, it has kind of a, um, in a non-linear resistance curve. So basically you're getting peak tension when you're at 90 degrees and then you have almost no tension at the top of the curl and almost no tension at the bottom of the curl. So it reaches a maximum here and then it levels off on either side of that. Yeah. With the Bayesian curl, when you set it up with the cable, you have almost consistent tension throughout the entire range of motion, just because of, when you think about it, the cable's almost coming forward in like a straight line, Yeah. right? So unlike with the dumbbells, you have that constant tension on the bicep. That may or may not be valuable from a hypertrophy perspective, but it's at least a slightly different modality of loading. 100%. Right? Um, and then also you have a, a greater degree of stretch on the biceps here. I think that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Um, and then also it's, it's a crazy pump, man. It, dude, I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, let me just say like post, like, cause we did uh, do the workout. Yeah, okay. it was I didn't know we were trying to lie about no, that. No, 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 we, uh, it was insane. Like I, yeah, I yeah. really, I highly yeah. enjoyed uh, this workout. And then yeah. you also chose then some tricep exercises, went heavier with the uh, push down. Right? Yeah, so the, the, the tricep press down is going to be like kind of like the easy bar equivalent for the triceps. So we're loading that in like the six to eight rep zone. Um, and even though it's heavy, I do like to reserve sort of cheating or momentum for those last like rep or two. Yeah. Just to give yourself, you know, a little bit of room for some body English because I feel like if you're too locked in, it's almost like you just can't even get that same load. So as long as you're controlling the eccentric, I'm okay with a little bit of cheating to finish out the last couple reps. Yeah. Um, but yeah, three sets of six to eight reps on the tricep press down with the bar because you can go heavier with the bar. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I thought you had a Full stack. Yeah, full sand, eh, There should be like an alarm if you want to just go full stack, guys. Full stack. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. then uh, lastly, that was really cool too. I've never done, done that before. The cable, yeah. um, where you use that and you extended overhead, and yeah. so we did overhead wide yeah. uh, for the triceps because. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I think with the triceps, where you do have one head yeah. that's biarticular, so it crosses both the shoulder and the elbow joint, you can get it more or less involved depending on shoulder position. So when you have the elbow down, the shoulder is more flexed. So you're actually gonna involve a little bit more of the lateral head, so yeah. that like outside horseshoe part of the tricep. Whereas when the arm is up overhead, now you have the long head in more of a stretch position, so it's gonna uh, come more into play. Uh, so I think, I actually think that is important for overall tricep development, is you want something where the elbows are down and then something where the elbows are kind of up overhead. So we finished off with that, I think, 12 to 15 reps. Yeah, man. Yeah. And let me just say, that's why I love about your approaches. Because someone just seeing the workout, if you didn't explain everything that took place, people would just think, oh, like you chose like six exercises, you did whatever, there's a rep range here, a rep range there, you trained intensely. It's like, I like how methodical you approach things where there's a reason behind it. Yeah. You know, there's a combination again of evidence and also experience. And so maybe in closing, because this is something I need to uh, uh, improve upon, what would you say for people that want to get bigger arms? So this is like a, a solid arm workout. You explain kind of the reasoning behind this workout in particular. Any closing thoughts? Yeah, I think it's kind of the same for every body part. It ultimately comes down to overload, progressive tension. So if you're going to focus on anything, I would say even in your specific case, focus on that one easy bar movement and really get progressively stronger. Like we didn't do very impressive weight today. Yeah. I think that you could easily have a 45 on each side and be doing that for six to eight clean reps. So aim to just 
increase the progressive tension on that one movement. And then the same thing for the triceps. Try to obviously increase your bench, but also keep a careful track of uh, the tricep press down and get a little notebook. Like we didn't track anything yeah. today, right? The camera I, tracked it, bro. <laughs> yeah, they know. Yeah. Um, but in reality, I feel like it just helps keep you so much more accountable to progressive overload. Yeah. Um, and then on the other stuff, you have that little bit more flexibility for variety. If you want to try this intensity technique that you saw on a channel or what have you, like you have room to do that. And Absolutely. I think that that's also important because if you're only focused on like your pull up, your barbell curl and your hammer curl or whatever it is, and that's all you do and you're just overload, 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 that works for some personality types, but for people who maybe have been doing it for a long time or maybe they're running the same routine, you have to have those flexible components in there as well. So it's a bit of a drawn out answer, but ultimately I think it comes back to the overload principles. No secret. No, yeah. it makes sense. I, I'll just say in closing that Jeff, I want to thank you for being on the channel. I think once again, like I said before, I think you put out phenomenal content. For those that are interested in actually learning about training, they 100% uh, should be subscribed to your channel. We have to get some more lifting sessions in the future. Yeah. Where can people find you? Uh, I'm on YouTube, hopefully yeah. you'll be a good bro and link it. Yeah. Oh, it's one, sure. top yeah, link, bro. Okay. It ain't gonna be any of that weird bottom, like you've yeah. done that before. You, After all your someone? sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like to think the my disclaimer, age. and then it's just me on the <laughs> And it's like, drawer, and it's just like, and it's not even hyperlink. Like, oh, you just shit. put www, so yeah. they can't even click it. <laughs> Terrible. No, we'll link that at the top of the description. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you like this video, make sure to like the damn video. That's all the time we have, and we'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Ooh. I'm just growing just even by making that connection. Yeah, I went from 13 really to 13.2 yeah. inches right there. You see that? <laughs> That's called uh, osmosis. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.